five cases coming up. One from Care Hospital, Dr. Sudh Prakash and Kaparthi team, and the other one is from Yashoda Hospitals, Dr. Shashikant and Rajshekar. We initially go to Care Hospital, see them for some time, then switch to Yashoda and come back to Care, maybe. Over to you, Rajesh, go for this session. Sudh Prakash, sir, uh, I think uh, uh, we are... Good evening, uh, Sinmas Kumar. First of all, our... Uh, uh, am I audible to you? Yes, uh, yes, we can see you. Uh, uh, yes, first, yes. Of, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations for a successful program and which is very educative and uh, so many interesting cases done and uh, from uh, myself and my team, uh, our gratitude to the TCT India, particularly yourself uh, leading the team. So today, uh, myself, uh, Dr. Kapadji, my senior colleague, Dr. Sudhak Reddy, Kantilal Shah, and um, technicians, uh, and uh, Anu, and uh, Najma, Madhu, Anwarji, many are there. And uh, we have a case of uh, RCA CTO. My colleague, Dr. Sudhaka Reddy, will give you a short history and angiogram findings. Sudhakar. Dr. Good Sudhakar, evening. please. A very good evening. Uh, greetings from Care Hospital, Banja Rails, Hyderabad. Here is a 63 year old male gentleman uh, with her hypertensive, diabetic, with history of low threshold effort angina for the past two, two months. EC suggests of normal sinus rhythm, LVH with RS pattern in the inferior lids. Echo, there is no regional valve abnormality with fair relief function. EGFR was 86 ml per minute per 1.75 meter square. Angio done elsewhere two months mm -hmm. ago, uh, showing left, domin left dominant system, LAD mild, mid LAD mild block, diagonal uh, fair size vessel with osteoproximal tight lesion, Major OM is large, normal, and uh, dis dyslarsia is filling from the epicardial and uh, septal collaterals. Next. LAD lesion, diagonal lesion. Diagonal osteoproximal uh, tight lesion is there. Dyslarsia filling retrogradely from epicardial and uh, septal collaterals. Next. There is a mid long segment CTO. Uh, probably of more than 20 mm uh, uh, in length with uh, one uh, collateral at the level of occlusion. Next. Coming to RCO, it is a proximal cap is here is uh, ambiguous with lesion length probably of more than 20 mm. Distal vessel uh, with reasonably good quality with collaterals from apicardial and septals coming to the gestio score of 2. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sakredi. Now uh, I will uh, request Dr. Kapardi to um, go fast uh, because there are two live cases they have to demonstrate what steps we have done for this gentleman. Yes, uh, good evening Dr. Sinos Kumar and team and uh, regarding this case uh, uh, it is a RCA CTO the strategy here is uh, uh, anti-grade uh, virus collation technique uh, and with retrograde uh, um, guidance. So here the uh, collaterals if you take the septal collaterals are poor in uh, interventional collaterals are poor and only one epicardial collateral OM to PLV it is there. So with this we want to do the anti-grade escalation technique. So 7 French uh, uh, XB catheter was taken, engage the right coronary artery and the left coronary amplage, injection, amplage, amplage, yeah. sorry, no. amplage AL1 was taken with the side holes and then uh, left coronary artery was engaged with a uh, 5 French Judkin for uh, guidance and then subsequently we have taken the work horse by run through and uh, caravel support and uh, caravel micro catheter support we have taken up to the proximal cap then uh, subsequently we have changed the uh, um, uh, run through wire into the exchange to uh, field XTR because uh, basically our strategy here is a micro channel tracking here the lateral uh, view is a best view which is separated initially we thought ambiguous cap but it was a tapper tip uh, after the side branch so that we can place the wire in the uh, tapered portion of the cap. Uh, yes, I will interrupt Dr. Sinos Kumar. The Europeans and those who are a little scared about a lateral view, definitely more radiation. But uh, I somehow feel the mid RCA lesions, uh, its view is very, very uh, useful for uh, wire cross and uh, straight segments uh, crossing of the RCA. And here there is a side branch also is there. We can take advantage of a balloon anchoring and we can even uh, place a, uh, a eagle eye catheter, but there is a osteal stenosis though that uh, I was guided puncture may be difficult in this case. But uh, as Kapadi told, 
initially always invisible collaterals may be there in your channel. So we uh, opted for a soft tissue tracking as most of the Japanese feel. Then yes. you can escalate the wire. That is a strategy. Actually, uh, here the through invisible micro channel tracking, the Fielder XTR uh, successfully negotiated this uh, CTO segment and then we placed uh, Yes. Now you can see how it crossed the CTO and then uh, it entered in the distal true lumen. Next. Next you can show. So just two, two quick comments just please, for, the, uh, for, for folks out there. Yeah, Number please. one, I, I mean, one way to avoid the radiation of the lateral views, you can do an extreme right lateral, so then there's less radiation to you. But okay. um, the other thing that you showed really, really quickly as you went through those images is that you did go back to did an RAO shot very very important because a lot of times you think the wire is in a good place and then you go rao and you find out that it's in the margin or in the sub intimal space okay. and that can be challenging so always check that second view um the second uh, the we, final thing uh, i'll we mention check it in the, the rao the, the, we check it in the level we check it in the lateral perfect yeah. Yeah. And, and then this the last two points are that the dual injection yeah. And, and the use of the microcatheter yeah. are two ways that you can really, really improve not yes. only your support with the microcatheter, but your distal visualization. Because once you cross in a microchannel, there may not be distal visualization and you only really want to inject with the retrograde. Yes. So yes. keep going. Uh, uh, always we are uh, cross-checking with orthogonal planes uh, so that uh, we keep the wire in the intimal tracking and ultimately to cross the uh, distal, uh, uh, the CTO and we place it the wire across the distal uh, uh, vessel, target vessel, and then advanced this uh, caravel catheter, and then our job made easy. They we exchange it to again through our cards wire, and uh, we removed the caravel by means of balloon trapping technique, and then uh, subsequently we dilated, pre-dilated the lesion preparation by 1. means 5 of- 1.5 and 2 millimeter two low profile balloons. We could High profile balloons, yeah. yes, correct. And then, uh, and then we have taken an, uh, after uh, dilatation thoroughly the pre dilatation we took the check check injection yes you can see we have done the ivas here please read out the ivas to see the hand. distal vessel size because the distal vessel become contracted actually because of cto and then we have taken the exactly the vessel uh, to uh, collect uh, select the center size we have taken the distal vessel as well as the cto morphology and you can see the IVAS, you can concentrate. And here the vessel is almost uh, contracted, this is 2.3, but after giving NT injection, it was grown to 2.75 to 3. And then the CTO morphology, basically soft tissue is there. The pull back, you can show the IVAS. CTO segment issue. CTO segment, you can see, yeah, ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, please slowly. And then the soft tissue with a speckled calcium, it is there CTO at 7 o'clock, 11 o'clock and 3 o'clock position some calcific speckle, speckles of the S. Yes, that is the calcium you can see, the trimark appearance. And uh, uh, so it is a basically soft tissue with, uh, uh, I think, micro channel, that is acetyl morphology. That's where the uh, soft tissue uh, that uh, hydrophilic wire, a field XT attracted the micro channels. And the tapper tip we can easily see in lateral view because the ambiguous cap in other views, actually the outside uh, angio, it was not shown that uh, morphology. And then after pre-dilatation, the angiographic findings you can see. Next. So last view. Yes. Now we are about to, we so maintained the ACT the around the 300 with uh, heparinization. He received 12,500 heparin. Yes. So the the uh, size of this tent we are choosing the around 3 uh, because uh, the reference diameter came at 3 and the 3.2 actually on the IVAS. Um, just a question to you from 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 me, Dr. Ferenc from Germany. Uh, I think your your result after pre dilatation looks really nice. I didn't s uh, see really huge dissection dissected segments in in Ivos. So did you um, did you think about the the option to treat these patients with drug coated balloons, just not to stand? Or would you uh, definitely go with CTO, uh, <laughs> CTO PCA. Uh, we have done with uh, DES uh, many follow-up patients, absolutely long DES, several stents. Uh, uh, very rarely we see restenosis with overlap stents and all. Almost we completed 1,400 CTOs for 14 years. So we are very comfortable with the uh, long DES. Uh, and as you said, in uh, specific occasions, uh, with a small vessel, uh, this thing uh, we can avoid stents. There we use the DEB uh, and the side branch. Uh, otherwise, uh, we prefer to go with uh, DES. 
No, in general, the durable polymer ever elements stents are superior to duct coated balloons. Uh, actually, even uh, a routine CTOs, even in ISR CTOs. So, uh, the routine ever elements durable polymer, right. uh, we selected yeah, that yeah, option yeah. because it's a long term patency rates. And the other thing, intimal tracking was there. Why? Having had a subintimal track and entered the false uh, true, false true. Then uh, that may be considered, but here because it is intimal tracking from proximal cap to distal cap, so draco testant is, uh, uh, it is apt in this given case. And 3 into 33 uh, zines. 38. 38. 38 is the 38. 3 into 38. Small and it is uh, across that uh, CTO segment from. Uh, uh, Proximal Small healthy side. vessel to distal healthy vessel. Okay. Slightly. Ah. See me? Ah. Yeah. Do and not uh, the RV branch is protected with a wire. Do it. And then uh, uh, for the okay. proximal, uh, that mild uh, uh, disease was also covered. We can do. Yeah. Sarpur Tiger? Sarpur, Sarpur. Unemployment is sufficient. Ah, sufficient. Yeah, yes. Okay. Deploying at nominal atmospheres, uh, nominal pressure of uh, Two, 10 atmospheres. Four, 10 atmospheres. Six, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. Ah. Coming down. Exactly near the proximal sensitivity was still some waste was there. <coughs> We want to do high pressure dilatation. Dr. Perenk, what exactly you went with regulating balloon? You are thinking, we generally think of using regulating balloon when there is a diffuse long segment disease where you can't place a stent or yeah, instant restenosis. You, yeah, you are mentioning uh, was, regulating balloon here? Yeah, there is some study ongoing in, in uh, Europe uh, in CTO segments. Uh, okay. Long diffuse uh, changes, but if you achieve a good uh, flow and you don't have really or anything dissection, so you could even try to to treat that segments with the uh, yeah, yeah. So which yeah, Doctor Antonio Colombo presented a concept change? that uh, where yeah. you can uh, focal stand Take and then it is okay. You can just do regulating balloon provided. Uh, um, uh, and, and coming to this point because um, uh, one hour before. Oh, we had a presentation uh, from, from, um, from so colleagues which, yeah. Yeah, according to uh, instant resonosis treatment. And, uh, uh, yeah, yesterday, was, yesterday we had in the diffuse CAD symposium is yeah, a concept of presentation yeah. where you uh, dilate it and then uh, you also treat it with a regulating balloon. If there's no major dissections and uh, you would leave it and FFR values are also checked in that and if patient, my FFR is okay, then you uh, Thank as well as no know. major dissection, just a drug regulating balloon. Three balloons. Three balloons. Yeah, this will be definitely optional for patients with uh, some tendency to, to develop uh, instant resonosis. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Dr. Sinovas Kumar, yeah. uh, and the presently the role of drug coated balloons is in small vessels and distal diffuse disease. And uh, yes, sir. Yeah. I think no, no, that, three that's what we are following in India. But yeah, yeah, what yeah. Sir is mentioning is in diffuse disease, yeah, yeah. they're connecting one trial with okay, the regulating okay. balloon versus uh, regulating okay, okay. stent. Right, right. The central point, it looks narrow, no? Yeah, we yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, we have right. to dilate now. Now we are taking the uh, NC balloon, 3 into 12, 3 into 10, uh, 3 into 12 millimeter, and then we want to dilate that segment. Sir, after dilatation, you will do OC, IVAS, and uh, yes. probably ah, now we'll the important thing you have shown. Can we go to ASO ah, and come please, back to you please, finally? Please, and then? Definitely, Dr. Sinwas, please. Surprakas, sir, we are ah, with ah, you ah, now. Please. You can final comment. Ah, final Dr. Cindy Grimes has joined us, waiting for the next session. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, Welcome, madam. Just Dr. Sinwas, we just yeah. applied the stent. The proximal yeah. portion is under expanded, under expansion is there. 
yeah. and then we uh, take the 3 into 12 mm balloon and dilate three it systematically. 3.5. Three three next. Uh. 3 into okay. balloon post dilatation from uh, uh, distal to the proximally we dilated and then subsequently we did the Iverson. Iverson can you show? Please. Uh. So, Iverson you can see. I was you can see that distally the stent was uh, optimally deployed with uh, a good expansion and a good opposition, but uh, proximally if you can take just proximally you can take proximally yeah yes you, uh, yeah, yeah you can see here it is uh, under expanded actually here you can see uh, because the vessel size here is 3.5 mm millimeter. So, we have taken uh, next 3.5 balloon next 3.5 balloon and then we dilated the proximal half of the stent you can see yes next 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 and then uh, we ultimately we got a, a good result uh, uh, with the timi 3 flow thank you sir uh, thank you excellent you uh, demonstration and uh, normally we thought uh, it would uh, take long time for CTOs, but luckily <laughs> the software wire crossed and the job was easy. Thanks for showing a good case and uh, thank you for joining for TCT. Thank you. Thank I think you. Uh, uh, with, uh, with your permission, we'll go break now. Okay. And, uh, thank you. Thank you, Ajay, and uh, thank, thank you, you Frank, uh, for thank conducting the session. Thank you. All the best. Uh, and now thank we all the best. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Ajay and Dr. Ferring. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you guys. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Uh, uh, thank Namaste. I am uh, Dr. A. Srinivas Kumar, Senior Consultant Cardiologist, Director of Cardiology and Clinical Research, Apollo Hospital, Hyderabad. This video brings you uh, brings to you the best wishes from Fax Foundation and TCT India South Asia 2021. In our live case learning uh, case series, uh, this video will bring to you uh, the highlights and the important uh, messages what we have learned in the RCA uh, CTO PCI. Uh, which was uh, done with the IVAS guidance by Dr. Sura Prakash and Dr. Kaparthi of uh, Care Hospitals Hyderabad. What we have learned is uh, how to decide uh, to use uh, anti-grade versus retrograde and then if you have decided because of a faint trickle in anti-grade manner, then uh, how to decide regarding the wire escalation technique versus uh, anti-grade dissection and re-entry. Basically, as we understand that uh, when there is a faint uh, CTOs uh, with uh, relatively recent occlusions and especially when you think there could be soft plaque with uh, faint micro channels, we always uh, try to decide and use the wire escalation techniques starting with uh, uh, very soft wires like uh, Fielder XT and then uh, gradually again increasing uh, the wires uh, in a staged manner depending upon in what stage you use it. And obviously, this uh, wire exchange need to be supported by the microcatheter technique. In this case, actually, the caravel was taken initially, and then a filter XT wire was used uh, to cross the lesion. And uh, lesion crossed relatively easily because probably of the presence of micro channels, which was again demonstrated later by using an intravascular ultrasound. Later, once the lesion is crossed, then it is always important to exchange this wire back to your regular workhorse wire uh, by advancing the caravel catheter distally and then uh, the filter XT wire was changed again to uh, run through wire which is their workhorse wire in the lab and then uh, serial balloon dilatations with a smaller balloon then taking a bigger balloon was done and then IVAS catheter was introduced to see the extent of the normal to normal segments and also, uh, also to see uh, what is type of uh, plaque was there in the CTO and uh, how these micro channels appear on the IVAS was very well demonstrated which we all of us have seen and uh, learned. And it's also important to assess regarding the calcifications uh, which was there for about 270 degrees in this RCA and that's how the lesion bed preparation with NC balloons uh, initially with smaller balloon later with the bigger size balloon was uh, shown as mandatory. And in spite of doing this again after taking the stent, there is again small residual under expanded portions, which was again post dilated with a 3.5 uh, bigger NC balloons uh, to optimize the stent expansion 
and the opposition, which was again very well uh, demonstrated in the post PCI IVAS uh, uh, runs in these patients. It was also discussed uh, regarding the wire crossing, which are the ideal uh, uh, views to see. And Dr. Surpraka specifically mentioned that in the, when you are trying to cross in the mid RCA, he felt that uh, lateral views, of which were uh, supposed to be worried and less used, the Western and Japanese were also useful. He found it. And at the same time, uh, Dr. Ajay mentioned that if you are worried about uh, too much of radiation exposure, then probably instead of left lateral, you could use a right lateral view, which gives less radiation to us. And again, the point of uh, checking in both uh, the uh, quantilateral and the ipsilateral views, like what we call is uh, um, views like REOs, LOs, and uh, was always stressed upon to see the wire course so that uh, you will pass in the intima to intima without uh, getting into uh, dissection uh, planes. And once the wire gets into dissection planes, unfortunately, then the usage of anti-grade uh, dissection and re-entry could be done, which will be demonstrated in another case uh, by Dr. Goel from SGPGI. And this uh, we wanted to demonstrate anti-grade wire escalation technique, which was again uh, very well demonstrated uh, in this uh, RC or CT world lesion. Then uh, after uh, the wire was crossed and the balloon dilatations was done, I was didn't show too much of dissections. Then the concept of uh, treatment of this with only regulating balloons was brought in by Dr. Ferenc, who was uh, moderating the case along with Dr. Ajay. And then we all discussed uh, and felt that as of now, what we use for regulating balloons is basically for uh, distal vessel, thin vessels and diffuse disease and probably instant restenosis. But Dr. Ferenc uh, pointed out and uh, brought a, a, new, a research uh, study going on comparing uh, the regulating balloons versus regulating stents after the CTOs are opened, especially when you find the long diffuse disease after the opening of the vessels with the balloons. But uh, uh, Dr. Sur Prakash uh, felt that uh, uh, they found the usage of uh, everluminous elating stents, especially even though there were long stents required and his long experience, uh, they all found usage of drug relating stents to be quite good. And then probably less of patient uh, TLRs and follow-up was highlighted with the use of drug relating stents. But uh, uh, the concept of uh, focal statement with stents uh, followed by uh, diffuse uh, patching up uh, dilatations with the drug relating balloons and later on checking uh, with uh, the FFR values, uh, which was concept which was brought out by Dr. Antonio Colombo in the earlier lecture of diffuse CAD was also discussed and this concept needs to be further studied in these patients of uh, diffuse coronary artery disease. Many of the times we feel the arteries are uh, diffusely diseased but once you treat them with nitroglycerin the arteries could grow and then probably instead of using a very long stent the stent diameters could be limited uh, but uh, obviously when you're using imaging like I was you can exactly make out from the plaque extent from which uh, place starting to which place distal and uh, take appropriate sized and diameter stents and then poster dilate the stents with again bigger sized uh, uh, diameter balloons so, so as to uh, perform the PCI as uh, what we call as optimal PCI uh, implantation techniques and uh, that is how the IVAS helps in uh, guidance of uh, uh, this uh, uh, I use CTO imaging and also CTO performance of PCI. That's how the outcomes in the CTO patients could improve in long-term follow-up. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed uh, this live case learnings of CTO PCI with uh, integrated wire escalation techniques with IVAS guidance. Thank you all. Yours, uh, Dr. A. Srinivas Kumar.